This video is brought to you by Ultium. Recently, I got this Raspberry Pi Pico board from the TFRO board. Raspberry Pi Pico isn't as popular as the Arduino boards, and this is because more than 80% of the guys are only running after the Arduino boards. While the fact is, Raspberry Pi Pico is the best microcontroller board, and it's capable of doing things which you can't even imagine doing with the Arduino boards. Raspberry Pi Pico is much cheaper than the Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano and other Arduino boards. I got this Raspberry Pi Pico board from the TF robot for only $4. Anyway, since this is a getting started tutorial, so I will try my level best to explain each and every detail including Number 1. Raspberry Pi Pico comparison with Arduino Number 2. Raspberry Pi Pico technical specifications Number 3. Raspberry Pi Pico pinout details. Number 4. Raspberry Pi Pico onboard components. Number 5. Raspberry Pi Pico micro Python installation, driver installation, and Tony IDE installation. After covering the most basic things, then I will practically show you how to use the most commonly used electronics components with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Since I'm making this video for the absolute beginners, so first I will start with the easiest example which is controlling the Raspberry Pi Pico onboard LED. I will write a very basic program to turn on and turn off the onboard LED. Then in the second example I will show you how to connect an external LED. In third example I will show you how to connect multiple LEDs and then how to modify the existing code to make some cool patterns. These LED example projects will help you in understanding how to turn on and turn off any GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico. In the fourth example, I will show you how to read a digital input on any GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico. For this, I will use a push button. We will be reading and controlling both at the same time. The Raspberry Pi Pico board will sense the button click and will then accordingly turn on and turn off the LED. In the fifth example, I will show you how to connect an OLED display module with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I will write a very basic program to print some text on the OLED display module. This is really an important example because in maximum of the projects you will need displays to print some text and sensor values. In the sixth example, I will show you how to use an analog sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico and display its value on the OLED display module. For demonstration purposes, I will be using a potentiometer as the sensor. In the seventh example, I will show you how to use an ultrasonic sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico and display its value on the OLED display module. In the eighth example, I will show you how to make a temperature monitoring system. And by the way, I will be using the Raspberry Pi Pico onboard temperature sensor. In the ninth example, I will show you how to make the day and night detection system. This is really an important example is I will be explaining how to use an LDR sensor and a relay module for controlling a 110 or 220 volt AC light bulb. In the tenth and final example, we will be making a small security system using a PIR sensor and a buzzer. The PIR sensor will sense the motion which will trigger the Raspberry Pi Pico and then the Raspberry Pi Pico will turn on the buzzer. All these Raspberry Pi Pico example projects will help you in getting started with this low cost and powerful RP2040 based microcontroller board. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Raspberry Pi Pico and Arduino as this is the only way to let you know how powerful is Raspberry Pi Pico. Arduino is based on the 80 Mega 328 single core microcontroller while the Raspberry Pi Pico is based on the RP2040 dual core. 
Arduino has 8-bit core architecture, while the Pico has 32-bit ARM Cortex M0+. Arduino has 16 MHz CPU clock, while the Pico has up to 133 MHz. RAM size on Arduino is 2 KB and on the Pico it's 264 KB. Flash size on Arduino is 32 KB and on Pico it's 2 MB. EEP ROM in Arduino is 1 KB while in Pico there is no EEP ROM. Arduino programming is done in C using Arduino IDE while the Raspberry Pi Pico programming is done in MicroPython, C and C++ and I will use Tony IDE. In Arduino the board power input is 5V DC which is given through USB B while in Raspberry Pi Pico the 5V DC is supplied via USB micro B. Alternative board power in Arduino is 7 to 12 volts DC which is given via DC female socket while in Pico board the voltage range is from 1.8 to 5 volts DC which is supplied via VSYS pin 39. Arduino is based on the 5 volt DC compatible microcontroller unit while the Pico board is based on the 3.3 volt compatible microcontroller unit. USB interface in Arduino is external USB serial IC and in Pico board it's USB 1.1 device and host. Arduino uses USB B virtual serial port for the program loading while the Pico board uses USB micro B USB mass storage. Arduino has 20 digital pins while Raspberry Pi Pico has 26 digital pins. In Arduino ADC is 6 into 10 bit while in Pico it's 3 into 12 bit. Arduino has one UART and Pico has two. Arduino has one I2C and Pico has two. Arduino has one SPI and Pico has two. Arduino has 6 PWM pins and the Pico board has a total of 16 PWM pins. The onboard LED in Arduino is connected to pin 13 while in Raspberry Pi Pico the onboard LED is connected to GP25. The Arduino board price may vary depending on whether you are purchasing the clone version or the Gen 1. But even the clone version is expensive than the Raspberry Pi Pico. On most online stores, the Raspberry Pi Pico board is only for $4. After this detailed comparison, I must say Raspberry Pi Pico is the future. Anyway, let's move on to the next step which is now I'm going to explain the Raspberry Pi Pico pinout in very detail. Raspberry Pi Pico has a total of 40 pins or GPIOs out of which 26 GPIOs are multipurpose. Since Raspberry Pi Pico is based on a 3.3 volt compatible controller board RP2040, so the operating voltage on these GPIOs should not exceed 3.3 volts. Now, out of these 26 pins, 23 pins GPIO 0 to GPIO 22 are digital only, and 3 pins GPIO 26 to GPIO 28 can either be used as digital GPIOs or as ADC inputs. Raspberry Pi Pico has two SPI pins, two I2C pins, two UART pins, 16 controllable PWM pins and nine ground pins. On the big side you can see all the pins are clearly labeled. This board has three extra serial wire debug port pins. VBUS is the micro USB input voltage connected to micro USB port pin 1. This is normally 5 volt or 0 if the USB is not connected or not powered. VSYS is the main system input voltage which can vary in the allowed range of 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts and is used by the onboard Raspberry Pi Pico SMPS switched mode power supply to generate 3.3 volt for the RP2040 and its GPIOs. 3.3 volt enable connects to the onboard SMPS enable pin and is pulled high to VSYS through a 100 kilo ohm resistor to disable the 3.3 volt which also depowers the RP2040 short this pin low. 3.3 volt is the main 3.3 volt supply to RP2040 and its IO pins 
generated by the onboard SMPS. This pin can be used to power external circuitry. Maximum output current will depend on RP2040 load and VCS voltage. It is recommended to keep the load on this pin less than 300 milliamps. ADC VREF is the ADC power supply and reference voltage and is generated on Pico by filtering the 3.3 volt supply. This pin can be used with an external reference if better ADC performance is required. A ground is the ground reference for GPIOs 26 to 29. There is a separate analog ground plane running under these signals and terminating at this pin. If the ADC is not used or ADC performance is not critical, this pin can be connected to a digital ground. I have talked much about the GPIOs and other pins. You can download this pinout diagram from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. There are so many other technical things which I have already included in the article. So if you want to know more about the Raspberry Pi Pico, then go ahead and read my article. Anyway, now let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi Pico onboard components. On the board, you can see all the components. This is the main RP2040 dual core ARM Cortex M0 Plus processor. This is the 2 MB quad SPI flash. This is the boot selection button. This is the onboard LED which is connected with GP25. This is the micro B USB board which is used for power and also for the data transfer. Now let's move on to the next step which is setting up the Raspberry Pi Pico before we can start the programming. This video is sponsored by Ultium. Ultium Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultium Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultium Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. If you want to get started with the Ultium Designer, you can click on the first link in the description. Push and hold the boot selection button and plug your Raspberry Pi Pico into the USB port of your laptop or computer. It will mount a mass storage device called RP1-RP2. Release the boot selection button after your Pico board is connected. Copy the micro Python UF2 file. Open the RP1-RP2 device and paste the file. Next, check the driver if it's installed. In Windows 10, the driver is automatically installed, but if you are using a lower version of the Windows, then you will have to manually install the driver. You can download the Atmel Devices CDC driver file from our website. You can find a link in the description. Anyway, the driver is installed and also the MicroPython has been installed on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now I'm going to disconnect the Pico board. Now, the final step is to install the Thony IDE and of course you can download this file from our website. There is nothing complicated, just follow the same exact steps.
the installation is successfully completed and now we can click on the finish button open the Tony IDE go to the run menu and click on select interpreter select micro python raspberry pi pico now the ide is ready for the programming my raspberry pi pico board is ready for its very first project that is blinking the onboard led i'm going to connect my pico board with the laptop now let's go ahead and take a look at the led blinking program i have this very simple code for blinking the led the purpose of this code is to turn on the LED for one second and then turn off the LED for one second. For the line by line code explanation to read my article, I will provide a link in the description. To run this code on the Raspberry Pi Pico, simply click on the play button. You will be asked where to save the code file. In the computer or the Raspberry Pi Pico board, you need to select the Raspberry Pi Pico board and the same thing I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Give a name to the file and don't forget to add the .py extension. Otherwise, the code won't run on the Pico board. As soon as you click the OK button, the LED will start blinking. The LED blinking delay time can be increased or decreased. Right now, the LED is turning on and turning off after every one second. To stop the code simply click on the stop button and now you can see the LD is not blinking anymore. And of course if you want to run the code again then simply click on the play button. It's just that simple. When you save a file on the Raspberry Pi Pico board and you give it a name other than main.py as in my case I saved the file with the name LD underscore blinking.py then such a file needs to be run manually which is really annoying. Let me do it for you and you will get the idea. I'm going to unplug the USB cable. You can see after connecting the USB cable the LED is off. It's not working. Now what to do? If we want to run the code automatically each time we connect the Raspberry Pi Pico board. For this you don't have to make any changes in the code. All you need is simply resave the file but this time with the name main.py so if you want to run your code automatically on the raspberry pi pico then give it the name main.py finally click on the ok button and you are done you can see the ld is blinking now if i unplug the pico board you can see the ld is not blinking and now if I plug it again, the LED will again start blinking. I'm sure you have fully understood how to control the onboard LED and how to save the code file on the Raspberry Pi Pico board. You can always start with this simple getting started project to test your Raspberry Pi Pico board. Anyway, so far everything is done correctly. The micro Python installation is done correctly. The Raspberry Pi Pico driver is working and the Tony IDE is working. Now, to use Pico board with external electronic devices, I'm going to solder mail headers. As you can see all the mail headers are soldered and now I'm going to explain how to control an external LED. For this example you will need a 2.5 volt LED and a 330 ohm resistor. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The cathode leg of the LED is connected with the Raspberry Pi Pico ground pin and the anode leg of the LED is connected with the GP28 through a 330 ohm current limiting resistor. I did the same exact connections on the breadboard 
and now let's take a look at the programming this is the same exact program that I used for controlling the onboard LED this time I made a few changes to make it more readable this time I'm using the GP28 to control the external LED I also defined a variable delay so by changing this value over here you can control the blinking rate of the LED so let's go ahead and run this code let's change the delay time I'm sure now you have fully understood how to control an external LED. Now in this third example, I'm going to explain how to use multiple LEDs with Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to create the Night Rider LED effect using Raspberry Pi Pico and multiple LEDs. So first, let's take a look at the circuit diagram. In the previous example, I used the GP28 pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico board to control the LED. This circuit is quite similar to the previous circuit. The only difference is that this time I'm using multiple LEDs. I'm using the same 330 ohm current limiting resistors. The cathode legs of all the LEDs are connected with the ground pin of the Pico board and the inode legs of all the LEDs are connected with GP21, 22, 26, 27 and 28 through these current limiting resistors. You can increase the number of LEDs as per your requirement. Make sure you keep an eye on the maximum current rating. If you need more current, then you can use an external power supply. I completed all the connections as per the circuit diagram. And now let's take a look at the programming. This code is similar to the previous code. The only difference is that this time I'm using multiple LEDs to create the Knight Rider effect. I'm turning on only one LED at a time. You can see the code is quite lengthy. You can reduce this code to a few lines of code by using an array. You can download that code from my website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. For now, we will continue with this code. So let's go ahead and run this code. It looks pretty awesome. You can increase or decrease the delay time in the same way as I previously explained. I'm sure you have fully understood how to turn on and turn off any GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Now let's move on to example number four. In example number four, I'm going to explain how to use a push button with Raspberry Pi Pico. 
The purpose of this example is to help you understand how to read a digital input on any GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico board. This is really an important example so make sure you don't skip any information. If you learned how to read or detect the button click then you can read all the types of the digital sensors for example PIR sensor, infrared obstacle sensor, microwave sensor and so on. In simple words any sensor that gives you one or zero is the output signal. In this example push button is like a sensor that detects the user input. So to make it more interesting I'm going to control an LED so each time the button is pressed the LED will change its state. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. One side of the push button is connected with 3.3 volt pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico while the other side of the push button is connected with GP14 pin of the Pico board. The LED connection with the Pico board remains exactly the same. Now let's take a look at the programming. The purpose of this program is to toggle the LED as the LED is an output device so that's why I set it as output and as push button is an input device so that's why I set it as input. Rest of the code is pretty straightforward. If a button click is detected then simply toggle the LED means if the LED is off then turn it on or if the LED is on then turn it off. Now let's go ahead and run this code. You can see each time I press the button LED changes its state. Now let's move on to example number 5. In majority of the projects we need display units for printing text and sensor values. Nowadays one of the most commonly used displays is the OLED display module. The one you can see on the screen is the SSD 1306 I2C supported OLED display module which I'm going to use with the Raspberry Pi Pico. I have also used this OLED display module with the Arduino boards, ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module, Node MCO ESP8266 Wi-Fi module and so on. Most of the Raspberry Pi Pico OLED display module libraries display text which is too small. I have seen a lot of guys searching about how to increase the text size. So in this example, I will show you how to increase the text size. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The SSD 1306 OLED display module VCC and ground pins are connected with the Raspberry Pi Pico board 3.3 volt and ground pins. The SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module are connected with GP17 and GP16 pins of the Pico board. These are the minimal connections which you need to get started with the OLED display module. I connected the OLED display module with the Raspberry Pi Pico board as per the circuit diagram. In order to display text or value on the OLED display module, first we will need to install the SSD1306 library. So let's go ahead and install the library. Before you start the library installation first, make sure your Tony IDE is in the Raspberry Pi Pico mode. If not, then simply click on the tools menu and then click on the options. On the options windows click on the interpreter tape and in the list select the micro python raspberry pi pico and click on the ok button. For the library installation click on the tools menu and this time click on the manage packages. Type ssd 1306 in the search box and click on the search button. wait for a few seconds. Multiple results will be displayed but you have to click on the micro python ssd 1306.
then click on the install button and wait for the installation process to complete. Once the library is installed, then you can click on the close button. Now we have to install another library, which is the MicroPython or LED. You might be thinking, why am I installing another library? Well, if you are not interested in the text size, then you don't have to install this library. You can use the SSD1306 library for printing the text and for displaying the values. But if you want to increase the font size, then you need this second library which I'm about to install. Both the libraries are installed. Now let's take a look at the SSD1306 OLED display module programming. The purpose of this code is to print OLED display and electronic clinic. The font sizes will be different. These two lines of codes uses the OLED library and this line of code uses the SSD1306 library. I'm going to run this code and you will get the idea. This is how easily you can print text on the SSD1306 or OLED display module. It depends on your requirement whether you want to use the OLED library or the SSD1306 library. Now let's move on to example number 6. In this sixth example, I'm going to use this potentiometer as the analog sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico board. You know we have two types of sensors, digital and analog. Digital sensor I already explained with the help of a push button. Now to explain how to read an analog sensor, this time I will use this potentiometer with one of the analog pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what I am going to do next is I will read this potentiometer and then I will display its value on the OLED display module. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The SSD1306 OLED display module connections with the Raspberry Pi Pico remains exactly the same. Left leg of the potentiometer is connected with 3.3 volts. Middle leg is connected with the Raspberry Pi Pico GP26 pin. And the rightmost leg is connected with the ground of the Pico board. I completed all the connections as per the circuit diagram. And now let's take a look at the programming. The OLED display module code remains exactly the same and this time I added code for reading the potentiometer. I defined a pin to which the potentiometer is connected. I named the GP26 pin as part underscore wall. These two lines of codes read the potentiometer and applies the conversion factor. These other lines of code simply print the value on the SSD1306 or LED display module. Now let's run this code. As you can see by rotating the knob of the potentiometer, I'm able to change the value. Now you can modify this code to control the LED brightness. You can control the speed of a DC motor and so on. Now let's move on to example number 7. In the 7th example, I'm going to use the most popular hc sr 4 ultrasonic sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pico. You know ultrasonic sensor is one of the most commonly used sensors and is usually used for obstacle detection and robotics. It is also used for monitoring the water level and so on. For now, I'll make a simple distance meter and you will be able to see the measured distance on the OLED display module. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The SSD1306 OLED display module connections with the Raspberry Pi Pico remains exactly the same. The VCC pin is connected with the VBUS which is pin 40 of the Raspberry Pi Pico. 
Trigger pin is connected with GP3, echo pin is connected with GP2 and the ground pin of the ultrasonic sensor is connected with the ground pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico board. I completed my connections as per the circuit diagram and now let's take a look at the programming. The SSD1306 OLED display module code remains exactly the same. This time I defined the trigger and echo pins which are connected with GP3 and GP2. I defined the trigger pin as the output and the echo pin as the input. The actual code is placed inside this distance function which measures the time duration of the signal as it travels from the transmitter to the receiver. Finally, the measure time is converted into centimeters and then divided by 2 to get the actual distance, while these other lines of code simply display the text and measure distance on the OLED display module. Now let's go ahead and run this code. I just built myself a distance meter. Now I can use this for obstacle detection, for controlling an electronic door lock, for measuring the water level inside a water tank, for controlling lights and so on. Now let's move on to example number 8. In this 8th example I am going to explain how to use the Raspberry Pi Pico onboard temperature sensor and display its value on the OLED display module. I am going to use this temperature sensor for monitoring the ambient temperature. I don't know if this sensor is going to give me the exact value as it is directly mounted on the Pico board as it may sense some heat from the board. This temperature sensor can be quite useful in situations when used in high temperature areas. So this sensor can monitor the Pico board temperature and when the temperature exceeds a predefined value of fan or other cooling system is automatically turned on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. For this project you only need to interface the OLED display module with the Raspberry Pi Pico. The connections I have already explained in example number 5. Now you might be thinking to which pin this onboard temperature sensor is connected. This onboard temperature sensor is connected to one of the ADCs or analog to digital converters. The temperature sensor does not have a physical pin in the board but is accessed as ADC4. This onboard temperature sensor works by delivering a voltage to the ADC4 pin that is proportional to the temperature. If you check the Raspberry Pi Pico datasheet you will find that a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius delivers a voltage of 0 0.706 volts. In the RP2040 Pico board, the ADC pin support 12 bits which means that the value can go from 0 to 4095. But the MicroPython code can scale the ADC values to a 16 bit range so we effectively get the range from 0 to 65535. The microcontroller works at 3.3 volts which means that the ADC pin will return a value of 65535 when 3.3 volt is applied to it or zero when there is no voltage. We can obtain all the in-between values when the voltage applied to the pin is between zero and 3.3 volts. Let's take a look at the code and you will get the idea. Now you should be able to understand why am I using ADC4 and why am I dividing 3.3 volt by 65535. As I explained earlier, if you check the Raspberry Pi Pico datasheet, you will find that a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius delivers a voltage of 0 0.706 volts. So that's why you can see these numbers and then this value is used to convert the temperature reading into Celsius. So that's all about the code and now let's run this code.
Now let's move on to example number 9. In the ninth example, I will show you how to make the day and night detection system. This is really an important example is I'll be explaining how to use an LDR sensor and a relay module for controlling a 110 or 220 volt AC light bulb. This LDR sensor is designed in a way that it only gives 1 or 0 as the output signal which makes it really easy to use. The light intensity level can be adjusted using this blue color potentiometer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The VCC and ground pins of the LDR module are connected with 3.3 volts and ground pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico while the D0 pin of the LDR module is connected with the GP14. This LDR module is slightly different from the one I'll be using. This LDR module also gives analog output while the one I'm using gives only digital output. The one channel relay module is controlled using the GP28 pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can follow these connections if you want to make your own relay module or you can use a ready-made relay module. The 2N2222 NPN transistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor makes the driver. I have a very detailed video on how to design your own driver circuit for different types of relays. I will provide a link in the description. Anyway, the neutral wire from the 110 or 220 volt AC is directly connected with the light bulb and the live wire from the supply is connected with the other contact of the light through this relay. So that's all about the connections. I did all the connections as per the circuit diagram and now let's take a look at the programming. I defined two pins and I'm going to call these as relay and LDR. As relay is an output device so that's why I set it as output and as you know LDR sensor is an input device so that's why I set it as input. Finally we use an if condition to check if the output on the LDR sensor module is high or low. So if the Pico board detects a high signal then the relay is turned on else the relay is turned off. Now let's go ahead and run this code. Using these few electronic components, you can make yourself a fully automatic street lights control system or lawn lights control system, etc. Now, let's move on to example number 10. In example number 10, I will show you how to use a PIR sensor and a 5 volt buzzer with the Raspberry Pi Pico. We will be making a small security system. The PIR sensor triggers the Pico board each time motion is detected and then the Raspberry Pi Pico board turns on the buzzer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the circuit diagram. The PIR sensor red and black wires are connected with the Raspberry Pi Pico board 3.3 volt and ground pins, while the signal wire of the PIR sensor is connected with the GP14 of the Pico board. This is a 5 volt buzzer and it can't be directly controlled using the Pico board, so that's why I'm using this driver circuit to turn on and of this buzzer. The base of the transistor is connected with GP28 pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico board. So that's all about the connections. I defined buzzer as the output and PIR sensor as the input. Buzzer is connected to GP28 and PIR sensor is connected to GP14. I'm going to call these pins as the buzzer and PIR sensor. Inside the while loop, we check if the PIR sensor has detected any motion and then accordingly turn on and turn off the buzzer. So that's all about the code. Now let's go ahead and run this code.
support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.